A very warm welcome to all of you to another series of lectures on modeling and simulation of communication systems using MATLAB. And uh, last time we had started discussing the for loop when we ran out of time and uh, we had touched upon the idea of for loop, this idea of uh, iterables and the iterator and how the for loop takes one element from the iterable at a time, assigns it to the iterator and then moves on to the next element. So, you might be familiar with the for loop in C and or C++ and here we have uh, looked at a slightly different uh, version of the for loop and as an example of an iterable, I created this list i and uh, iterated through it one by one. Now, you can do actually do anything with i. So, this is how the for loop works uh, specifically for a given list, but uh, generally we write the for loop this form for i equals 1, 2, 5, say 4, show me i plus 4 and if I, I have not put a semicolon here which means that uh, I just want to run this. So, I run this and it gives me i plus 4, one, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 which is i plus 4 for i goes from 1 to 5. Now, say suppose uh, if I use display here, if I use display along with number to string, it will give me slightly more fun result. So, this uh, avoids the use of that answer keyword every time. So, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, this is what I get. So, now suppose I want to go from 1 to 5, but or 1 to 50 or 1 to 10, it still works 5, 6, 5 to 14, which is the same, but now say suppose I want to go in steps of 2. So, I define it like this. So, in steps of 2, so I run this and I get 5, 7. So, this goes in steps of 2. What if I have to go in a decreasing order? So, suppose I go want to go in steps of 2 to 1. I can do that as well. In that case, what I get is, so I will look at this way of defining an array before we actually get into arrays. Let us define an array x equals 1, 2, 3. So, this defines an array of 3 elements or say 1 to 6. This defines a corresponding array as always. and uh, So, the general structure of defining this kind of an array, I think I should add a slide here to discuss this. So, should I will put it in this slide, x equals min step max defines an array whose first element is min with the subsequent kth element being min plus k minus 2 step and the last element being w equals min plus l times step such that w is less than or equal to max. So, this is how we define this array and uh, consequently if I write the code I think again this should be as a new slide. So, consequently, if I write for i equals x min 
step. Please note that min and max uh, are rather relative terms because this step can as well be negative. So, min and max might interchange, but uh, or I can say that x start step x stop code and then the iterable becomes the list described previously one then the interval becomes a list described previously and the for loop starts taking values of i from x start and in steps of step until it reaches x stop fine so this is how the for loop works and uh, I have shown an example where the for loop simply lists objects and uh, we will move on to more complicated examples as we talk about arrays because uh, the for loop is uh, mostly used in the processing of uh, arrays in MATLAB or uh, is used for array processing in MATLAB how we will uh, see. So, these are the two forms of the for loop so this and this this can the step size can the step can also be negative that is the only thing step can as in C plus plus fine. So, the last topic that we will cover in this chapter are functions. So, a function is basically so callable subroutine. that takes in certain input arguments and returns one or more output. The syntax for defining a function is you write function, you write the word function followed by whatever you want to return and uh, so maybe I will delete this and uh, I will use this to write function and then so the syntax for writing a function is something like this. You say function, you R1, the first variable to be returned, R2, the second variable to be returned equals function name input 1, input 2, etc. So, the function subroutine comes over here and then you write end. Fine. So, this is how you define a function and uh, as an example let us consider this example and then we will it will become clearer. So, let us look at this example of the while loop that uh, we did. So, I said we want to divide two integers and uh, generate a quotient and a remainder and I had written a bad efficient or a poor efficiency code for uh, doing the same. The reason I call this a poor efficiency code is because uh, there are faster ways of doing this even MATLAB uh, remainder function does this. So, what we are doing here is 
that we are taking in two inputs, the divisor and the dividend and we are returning two inputs, the quotient and the remainder. And uh, the purpose of a function is that we do not want to manually input these numbers again and again, we do not want to write this code again and, and neither do we want to write this code again and again. So, let me define a new function and call it poor quotient. So, there is a poor quotient already, so I will delete that file from here because you cannot have two functions of the same name. So, this is our first, this is our first function file and take two integers as puts and return two output. So, let us define the function, function, so let us quotient and remainder are the two inputs and I call this because I had named this earlier as poor quotient, I will call this poor quotient as numerator and denominator for simplicity, numerator and denominator. And like uh, everything else in MATLAB function ends with an int. So, let us start writing this. So, see when I try to save this, MATLAB automatically suggests me the name poor quotient because I am calling the function as poor quotient. So, MATLAB automatically suggests the name poor quotient for it. I save it as poor quotient and it gets saved. So, now what I have is that, uh, so I use this example from while, copy it because paste it over here. So, define q equals 0. So, I will call this q while q times x is less than equal to y while q times denominator is less than the numerator q equals q plus 1. This is what we are doing. I can write it like this and skip one more step. This and now I want to run this. So, when I want to run what is contained in a function, I call that function. So, I simply say that q R. Note that I can call a function without anything. So, I will do this clear all q I call as, so I call it as q comma r equals note that uh, to call a function the definition of that function. So, this file that I have written over here this function file that I have written over here, it is visible in the file view as poor quotient. So, I might also want to see that I uh, will just expand the view. So, yes, uh, you might notice that uh, this function has an fx written over here, whereas all the other scripts have the MATLAB icon, but uh, function has fx written over here indicating that uh, that MATLAB file contains a function. And uh, a function like all other MATLAB files is stored with uh, an extension dot m. So, q r poor quotient, say let me say that I want the quotient of 13 and 3 and it returns q equals 4, r equals 1. So, this and uh, let us see what happens when I just use 1 output. So, it gives me q and I say that I just want r. So, I can put a comma and I can say r and it gives me just r, it does not return q. So, uh, this is it. and uh, now, let me first clear the screen, I will run this as a script and I will run this as a function to illustrate the difference of how a function is different from a script. So, here when I try to run this as a script, I have to manually enter 
I have to manually enter uh, this thing and the two inputs that I give x and y are uh, stored in the workspace. Whereas, when I try to run this as a function, one, I do not have to open that script, I can simply invoke this function and uh, qr, so home and I will actually clear all CLC and so it just gives me q and r which are the outputs of the function. I just want r, I just want q to be returned, so this, so it just returns q in the workspace. I just run this function, if I simply run this function it just gives me one variable stores as answer the first output. So, I think I should write this down over here that uh, Oh, this is an important point to note, so I will write this down here in the box that when you execute function that is defined with multiple output arguments without specifying output argument function typically returns just the first defined just the first defined argument fine this is a function so keep these changes and uh, so the key purpose of a function a callable function is that uh, you want to do something you want to write it as a subroutine and you want to pass it variables and just get the output so basically I should write this as well, functions in MATLAB or any other language offer a layer of abstraction to what you are doing. They will offer a layer of abstraction to what you are doing. So, you say that uh, I define a function and uh, that function simply does something or that function is treated as a block. So, which means that the working of a function is treated as a black box. You do not want to know what goes or do not want to know or you do you are not interested in because you do not want to know sound slightly sinister programmer may not be interested in knowing what exactly goes on inside function. So, for the purpose of this course, for example, you want to calculate the sign of something. So, you are not interested, so you invoke the sign function directly. You are not interested whether uh, that uh, thing sums a series or uh, uses 
or uh, constructs a triangle magically out of somewhere, you do not want, you just want the sin of x that uh, this is x in radians, give me the sin of x. So, similarly, so sin is a MATLAB function. So, when you invoke a function, you do not want to know how, uh, you do not want to get into the details unless you are specifically working on that. You do not want to get in the details of how that function works. You simply want that, I uh, take this input and uh, tell me what is the output. So, that is why I say that the functions provide a layer of abstraction to whatever you are doing. So, you are uh, building something complicated, the outputs of functions can act as building blocks. So, with available functions, with a set of available functions, you can treat them as building blocks for something complicated without having to write down each and every work moving part of the code yourself. So, uh, the inbuilt functions in any language, MATLAB, Python, anything that you work with can uh, both be helpful as well as uh, uh, be problematic. So, like uh, in cooking food or uh, building something, we obviously know that uh, the more ready material we get for building something, the faster it will be built. But uh, that ready material should be according to our specifications or we should be able to play with that ready material according to our specifications in order to bring, build something properly. So, writing down all the functions from scratch is also a bad design idea and re relying on uh, the inbuilt functions for everything is al also bad design idea. But uh, since this is a programming course, what we will do is we will try to write down our functions for each and everything as far as possible, but uh, things that are either too complicated to write down or are too trivial like uh, the basic mathematical functions sin, cosine, logarithm which are too trivial and we know that they are uh, obtained by solving a series or something like uh, the fast Fourier transform which will require a lot of time to write down on our own we will use the MATLAB inbuilt functions and for everything else unless specified we will uh, write our own functions. So, this concludes the first module of this course on MATLAB. We will next uh, look at uh, how MATLAB treats arrays and matrices in the next set of lectures. So, thank you. Mm -hmm.